tonight, the southwest of the island sees a spike in COVID-19 cases, the highest number in three months. The World Health Organization approves the Chinese vaccine Sinopharm. Trinidad and Tobago already has 100,000 doses of that vaccine ready for use. And election concerns amid a state of emergency are addressed by Prime Minister Alan Shastny. The details of these stories and more coming up. This is the Hot 7 Nightly News with Lovely and Amy Joseph. Good night. It is Friday, the 7th of May, 2021. Welcome to the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. A special hello to our viewers on our free-to-air digital antenna. I'm Lovely St. Amy Joseph. Thank you all for joining us. Today, Friday, the 7th of May, the Ministry of Health and Wellness received confirmation of 47 new cases of COVID-19. This from a batch of 249 samples processed on the 6th of May. This is the highest daily increase in COVID-19 cases noted for the last 12 weeks. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar george says the majority of the cases, 63%, are from the southwestern belt of the island. The 47 individuals were seen at various respiratory clinics in communities. The increase in COVID-19 cases noted this week is of concern to the Ministry of Health. Therefore, the necessary public health systems are being strengthened to manage the situation. The Ministry of Health reminds the public that we are still in a vulnerable position based on the high risk of the introduction of COVID-19 and the variance of concern from the developed countries and neighboring Martinique and transmission in country due to poor compliance to protocol. The Health Ministry continues to advise the public to remain vigilant and adhere to the protocols that are put in place to keep the public safe. These include regular hand washing, keeping frequently touched surfaces clean, the use of a face mask in public places, avoiding crowds and people with respiratory symptoms. Dr. Belma George says vaccination remains the most effective public health measure in managing infectious diseases. The AstraZeneca vaccine has been proven to be safe and effective in protecting people in, from developing COVID-19, its severe forms, complications, hospitalizations and death. We continue to urge the public to access the various vaccination sites to get immunized at the soonest. The vaccine is available free of charge to the public at many venues on a daily basis. As of yesterday, May 6, 2021, a total of 24,985 persons received the first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine and 10,836 have received the second dose of the vaccine. Encourage your family and friends to get immunized so we can all be protected. The new cases bring the total number of cases diagnosed in country to date to 4,654. Presently, all of the 136 active cases are doing well. The World Health Organization, WHO, on Friday granted emergency approval to the COVID vaccine Sinopharm, a Chinese company. It is the first vaccine developed by a non-Western country to get WHO backing. The vaccine has already been given to millions of people in China and elsewhere. In late March, China offered 100,000 doses of the vaccine to the government of Trinidad and Tobago. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley said the vaccine gave gift was accepted as Trinidad and Tobago awaited WHO approval. The Chinese ambassador to Trinidad and Tobago said the safety and effectiveness of Chinese vaccines are earning recognition across the world. The World Health Organization had previously only approved the vaccines made by Pfizer, AstraZeneca, Johnson & Johnson and Moderna. Hit by the double whammy of U.S. sanctions and a pandemic, Cuba is going through its gravest economic crisis since the collapse of the Soviet Union. Pharmacy shelves are barren. People queue for hours to buy chicken. 
it's hard to even find bread. And yet the island under siege could become the smallest country in the world to develop its own coronavirus vaccines. Of the 27 coronavirus vaccines in final stage testing around the world, two are Cuban. In nine months, Cuba has gone from an idea to a vaccine in phase three clinical trials. About 44,000 volunteers in Havana are currently participating in phase three trials for Sovereign II. That is one of Cuba's COVID-19 vaccines. A similar number in the eastern city of Santiago are volunteering for phase three of the Abdallah vaccine. The hope of getting back to some sense of normalcy for St. Lucian's is growing by the minute as residents continue to line up to take the second dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. On Friday, the staff of Hot FM Communications Limited made it their business to ensure that they play their part in getting St. Lucia to herd immunity. With over 24,000 first doses and 8,000 second doses of the COVID-19 vaccines administered, St. Lucia is on track to protecting its people from severe disease and death from COVID-19. And with a high-risk group such as media workers, the chances of being exposed to COVID-19 are greater. Registered nurse Charlotte Baptist says media workers should in fact be at the front of the vaccination line. Well, I think it's very important, especially you'll go out, um, for example, at the VG complex, you will go to Beau and see the amount of persons that are there. You don't know who is positive. It's not marked on anybody's face. So uh, it is important because you do not know it's better for you to be covered than for you to be uncovered. It is for this reason that on Friday, staff at Hot FM Communications took the opportunity to take the second dose of the vaccine. They say it's the route that everyone should go so that St. Lucia can get back to normal. Well, I have had my second dose and uh, I thought it was very important because, you know, for us to, to move along, for us to be able to do some of the things that we claim we really want to do, I think it's important for us to take our second dose. I took mine. I want us to go back to some normal lives. I want to be able to hug somebody once again and not always wear my mask, right? But I will be wearing it for, for safety. But um, the second dose was... For me, just as easy as the first one, um, I felt nothing. I'm coming out of it. I don't know what the after effects will be. I had a, a slight chill the last time, but I'm ready to take it on. I think it's just something we should all do and um, no problem with it. Go ahead, take the second dose, take the first dose if you haven't taken it as yet. The registered nurse believes St. Lucia is on trend to gaining herd immunity. The numbers are constantly going up. Um, during the week, I heard that at the complex are like 700 persons. So I think persons are going for the vaccines. They've been listening to valid information, listening to the Ministry of Health officials, and they're getting vaccinated. As of May 5th, 24,773 people had received the first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine and 8,621 the second dose of the vaccine. For the Hot 7 News, Nisha Charles reporting. Thank you, Nisha. Health Minister Mary Isaac has stated her position on whether or not government will be mandating that all citizens receive the COVID-19 vaccine. Her response comes as Antigua and Barbuda's Prime Minister Gaston Brown warned of the possibility of implementing a mandatory vaccination program in that country. Minister Isaac does not believe that such a stance is likely for St. Lucia. I think different agencies may require their employees to have the vaccine, to take the vaccine. Um, but government, from a government standpoint, I do not think we would be requesting that people, that it is mandatory that people take the vaccine. But from a worker standpoint, employer and worker, they may require. I know right now the, um, the cruise ships are starting to call the workers back on board. And I will not be surprised if they request that these people take the vaccine. I haven't heard that they are requesting that. But I wouldn't be surprised if they To date, over 20,000 people have received the first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine and almost 10,000 have received the second dose of the vaccine. You're watching the Hot 7 TV nightly news. Stay with us. Still to come, the Prime Minister explains how an election can move ahead despite the state of emergency. Independent Senator Adrian Oje says the government has not made a compelling case for the extension of the SOE. But Health Minister Mary Isaac warns that St. Lucia could be wiped out in a matter of weeks if government does not press ahead with the extension.